Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Jason's friends and family choose sides, Ava and Sunny have another intimate moment, and Carly lashes out at Sunny for not backing Jason. Joss runs into Christina outside the court and inquires about Dante. Christina claims there is no change. Joss believes that this hearing is a waste of time and that they should focus on finding out who shot Dante. Christina believes they have discovered that individual. Joss can't believe Christina thinks Jason will shoot Dante. Christina claims that is what the evidence shows, according to Molly. Joss is outraged that Molly is prosecuting Jason, as this is a conflict of interest. Christina defends her sister as a professional, and this is merely a prelude to trial. Joss believes Jason should not even stand trial. Christina adds Sam and Sonny aren't present, which should tell Joss something. Joss tells Christina that Sonny is always incorrect. Liz enters and breaks up the altercation, while Joss storms off. Christina apologizes to Liz, knowing how she feels about Jason, but says everyone will have to choose sides. Michael meets his mother waiting for the arraignment to begin and attempts to tell her that Diane will get Jason released on bond. Diane appears, says that's the idea, and walks in. Carly asks Michael if there is any sign of Sonny. Michael says not yet. Alexis arrives to assist Molly and is upset that Robert left her with this issue. Olivia and Drew come, and Carly greets Olivia, saying it's lovely to see her. Oliva guesses why they're here and urges Michael and Carly that they should open their eyes to Jason. Drew calms Olivia and pulls her aside. Carly informs Michael that Olivia is unaware of Jason's side of the tale, as is everyone else. Carly notices a glint in Michael's eyes. She asks what he isn't telling her. He just says, not here. Joss rejoins her family, and Nina arrives. Carly informs her that if she is looking for Sonny, he is not present. Nina was, but she also said she wanted to thank Carly for guiding Drew to the light, and she's now back at Crimson. Carly doesn't care about the magazine right now and rushes out. Carly looks at Drew from across the room. Olivia inquires as to Drew and Carly's current situation. He tells her they broke up because he knows Jason would always come first with her. Jason is brought in and makes eye contact with Carly. Jason is invited to stand and make his plea to the court, and he pleads not guilty. Molly presents the case for no bail since Jason is a flight risk. Diane points out that the defendant has turned himself in and wants to prove his innocence. Diane said Mr. Morgan is connected to the community, particularly the Quartermain family. Molly tells out that Jason has a criminal record longer than a CVS receipt, DNA evidence places him on the dock where Dante was shot, and video evidence shows him on the roof where Sonny was shot. She claims the defendant fled and hid for three days. Diane informs out that the PCPD has a history with her client, which explains why he fled. The judge is aware of their background and sets bond at $5 million. The court is adjourned. Danny, who slipped in, slips out, and Liz pursues him. Joss hopes Michael brought his checkbook, and Michael responds, never come to court without it. Drew and Nina watch as Jason and Carly embrace. Sam sits by Dante's bed and reads to him. She tells him that she will need him to wake up soon since she is losing his voice. Portia arrives after learning Sam wants to speak. They walk out, and Sam says she heard the hospital plans to relocate Dante to Turning Woods, and she wants her to stop it. Portia is unaware of any transfers, yet, it may be in his best interests to relocate somewhere that can better care for him. Sam assumes this implies the doctors believe there is no chance, but Portia insists she is not saying that and will look into the transfer. Portia promises she will do her best to get her answers. Sam returns to Dante's bedside and tells him he will not leave, Stella stops by to speak with Sam and apologizes for being caught off guard when she learned that the hospital wanted to send Dante. Sam claims she has a lengthy relationship with this hospital and never imagined G.H. would give up on a patient. 
They walk out into the corridor, and Stella informs Sam that Dante is no longer in danger and is becoming stronger, but he may not wake up for some time. Sam and the associates turning woods with Mike. Stella believes Mike was close to her, he fought, and he realized when it was time to leave. Stella claims Dante is a fighter, but he requires tools and comfort to win this battle. Turning Woods offers great care in a home-like setting. She also mentions that Sam hasn't gotten much sleep here because hospitals aren't really relaxing. Sam understands her point, but sending Dante there seems like admitting defeat. Stella says that he may wake up sooner once there. Sam says the other issue is that Dante's son Rocco's mother is also in a long-term care facility, and she doesn't want to put Rocco in dread of losing his father as well. They return to Dante's room, and Sam reveals she is drawn to individuals who enjoy danger, and Dante may be the most dangerous of them because he is a wonderful guy who seeks justice. Sam thanks Stella for speaking with her, and Stella understands she has misgivings, but turning woods is the best option for him. She'll also speak with Rocco for her. Sam says she will speak with Sunny and Olivia about turning woods. Stella assured her that no one is giving up on Dante. Sam continues to sit beside Dante, washing his face and hands. She then curls up on a chair, hoping to get some sleep. She wakes up when the table is knocked over and a glass falls off. She thinks he has moved and approaches to his side, asking him to open his eyes. She believes he's coming back to her. Sonny returns home from his visit with Dante. Ava checks on him and figures he is on his way back to Jason's arraignment. He is unwilling to attend the arraignment. Ava adds that there may be a reason for all Jason has done. Sonny claims Jason was at the warehouse with the people that planned to take him out. Ava questions why Jason would help Dante if he planned to kill him. Ava understands how Jason's treachery devastated him. Sonny believes what stings the most is that his decisions landed Dante in the ICU. Ava wonders what he may have done to trigger this. He claims that his business put Dante in harm's way. Ava tells him that Dante's employment as a cop caused this. Sonny claims there has always been a wall between them that separates what they do, and his kid constantly gives him another chance. Sonny describes him as a decent man, even better than him. Ava advises Sonny that he must trust in his heart that he and Dante still have a lot of time together. Sonny is relieved she is here and can assist him by talking to him. Who would have guessed? Ava explains that sometimes individuals aren't who they appear to be, and Sonny agrees. Ava surprises Sonny with a get well card Avery created for Dante. Sonny recalls Dante attending Avery's class for career day and how pleased she was of her older brother. Sonny simply hopes Avery has more time with her older brother. Diane initiates the bail process for Jason at the PCPG. Michael and Joss wait, and Joss is relieved Sonny did not show up today because he does not deserve Jason's allegiance. Michael eventually posts bail, Jason is taken out, and Diane warns him to keep a low profile and avoid leaving town. Jason promises. Michael tells Jason they should go home, but Michael refuses. When Drew moves to Alexis in court, she asks him what's going on. Drew claims he has wonderful news. Nina is back at Crimson. Olivia claims that between Metro Court and Crimson, she will most likely not have time to torture Alexis at the paper. Alexis expresses gratitude for the news. Olivia invites Drew back to the support group for those forced to work with Nina. As people begin to leave, Alexis compliments Molly on her performance. Molly asks her mother if she has ever been happy to lose emotion. Alexis had been. Molly says she believes Jason is innocent. Alexis claims she kept her feelings to herself and did her work. Alexis talks about the system, and despite its flaws, it is people like Molly that ensure it is fair. Molly informs her mother that she intends to reclaim her legal license because it, too, was an injustice. Christina meets Nina outside the courtroom. She knows things are bad between Nina and her father, but they were happy together, and she hopes they can work things out. Nina expresses her gratitude and wonders why Sonny isn't present. Christina believes his absence speaks volumes, and he is probably feeling extremely alone. 
Christina suggests that now would not be a terrible moment to contact him. Nina is committed to her marriage and will show Sunny that they belong together. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.